This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. So yesterday, Texas enacted, well, they enacted previous, but the law went into effect yesterday, um, an unconstitutional provision that subverts Roe versus Wade. It put millions of Texas women in great peril relative to their health care, especially their reproductive health care. Abortions now, if they can detect what they call a heartbeat in a clump of cells after six weeks, uh, 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 any woman in Texas is not eligible for for an abortion. It's dangerous. And the Supreme Court last night, cowards, the, the conservative cowards on the bench, they decided not to uh, offer an injunctive relief. They're, they're not going to put a pause on this law going into, into effect until they can hear the case or until the case can work its way through the appellate system. Um, they ignored it. And I'm going to read from, and this will give you if, you, if you haven't heard and you don't know exactly how draconian and uh, hands made taily this particular law is, I'm going to read from the dissent of both Justice Sonia Sotomayor and Elena Kagan, uh, very briefly with Kagan, slightly longer with Sotomayor, but this is important. One, she goes through and explains what this law is about and argues from a, 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 a perspective of both a woman and also a justice sitting on the United States Supreme Court, an expert in her field. I'm going to switch glasses because again, my eyes are quitters and uh, listen to what she says. This is Justice Sotomayor with whom Justice Breyer and Justice Kagan join dissenting in the majority decision. The court's order is stunning. Presented with an application to enjoin a flagrantly unconstitutional law engineered to prohibit women from exercising their constitutional rights and evade judicial scrutiny, a majority of justices have opted to bury their heads in the sand. Last night, the court silently acquiesced in a state's enactment of a law that flouts nearly 50 years of federal precedents. Today, the court blatantly explains that it declined to grant relief because of procedural complexities of the state's own invention. Because the court's failure to act rewards tactics designed to avoid judicial review and inflicts significant harm on the applicants and on women seeking abortions in Texas. I dissent. In May 2021, the Texas legislature enacted this act, which took effect statewide at midnight on September 1st, makes it unlawful for physicians to perform abortions if they either detect cardiac activity in an embryo or fail to perform a test to detect such activity. This equates to near categorical ban on abortions beginning six weeks after a woman's last menstrual period before many women realize they are pregnant and months before and months before fetal viability. According to the applicants who are abortion providers and advocates in Texas, the act immediately prohibits care for at least 85% of Texas abortion patients and will force many abortion clinics to close. The act is clearly unconstitutional under existing precedents. Then she cites some cases explaining that this quote, the state may not impose an undue burden on the woman's ability to obtain an abortion of non viable fetus. And she cited Roe versus Wade and gave all the, the details for it. The respondents do not even try to argue otherwise, nor could they. No federal appellate court has upheld such a comprehensive prohibition on abortions before viability under current law. Unprecedented. The Texas legislature was well aware of this binding precedent. To circumvent it, the legislature took the extraordinary step of enlisting private citizens to do what the state could not. This is important. 
This is important because this is some kind of a Frankenstein's monster of how the Texas legislature is getting around Roe versus Wade. They're enlisting private citizens to inform on one another like this is Nazi Germany or something. Like this is Cold War era Russia. Suing neighbor against neighbor if they suspect someone had a hand in providing an abortion. To circumvent it, I will repeat, the legislature took the extraordinary step of enlisting private citizens to do what the state could not. The act authorizes any private citizen to file a lawsuit against any person who provides an abortion in violation of the act, aids or abets such an abortion, including by paying for it. Regardless of whether they know the abortion is prohibited under the act or even intends to engage in such conduct to be codified, blah, blah, blah. Courts are required to enjoin the defendant from engaging in these actions in the future and to award the private citizen plaintiff at least $10,000 in statutory damages for each forbidden abortion performed or aided by the defendant. In effect, the Texas legislature has deputized the state's citizens as bounty hunters, offering them cash prizes for civilly prosecuting their neighbors' medical procedures. The legislature fashioned this scheme because federal constitutional challenges to state laws ordinarily are brought against state officers who are in charge of enforcing the law. By prohibiting state officers from enforcing the act directly and relying instead on citizen bounty hunters, the legislature sought to make it more complicated for federal courts to enjoin the act on a statewide basis. Taken together, the act is a breathtaking act of defiance of the Constitution, of this court's precedents, and of the rights of women seeking abortions throughout Texas. Over six weeks after the applicants filed suit to prevent the act from taking effect, a Fifth Circuit panel abruptly stayed all proceedings before the district court and vacated a preliminary injunction hearing that was scheduled to begin on Monday. The applicants requested emergency relief from this court, but the court said nothing. The act took effect at midnight last night. And then very briefly from Elena Kagan, Associate Justice on the United States Supreme Court. Um, with, <clears throat> I'm going to read two paragraphs here. Uh, both of these very important. Uh, I would encourage you to find it. I'll put a link to the actual uh, Supreme Court link to the, to the decision. Uh, it starts on page 7 through page 12. Read this. Send this to people if they don't fully understand what this te Texas um, law is about. This explains it. But this also explains the methodology and the motivations of our 6-3 Supreme Court. How damaging they are. They are a group of religious zealots who are dictating to people of, not of their faith to live by the, the, the dictates of their faith, of their own faith. Without full briefing, again, this is uh, Justice Elena Kagan. Without full briefing or argument, and after less than 72 hours thought, this court greenlights the operation of Texas's patently unconstitutional law banning most abortions. The court thus rewards Texas's scheme to insulate its law from judicial review by deputizing private parties to carry out unconstitutional restrictions on the state's behalf. As of last night, and because of this court's ruling, Texas law prohibits abortion for the vast majority of women who seek them in clear and indeed undisputed conflict with Roe and Casey. Today's ruling illustrates just how far, and this is the part I want you to hear. It is unusual, let me say this, it is unusual for justices to take swipes at one another so directly and this is a statement by a sitting Supreme Court justice about just how radical our court is right now. Today's ruling illustrates just how far the Supreme Court's shadow docket decisions may depart from the usual principles of appellate process. 
That ruling, as everyone must agree, is of great consequence. Yet the majority has acted without any guidance from the Court of Appeals, which is right now considering the same issues. It has reviewed only the most cursory party submissions and then only hastily, and it barely bothers to explain its conclusion that a challenge to an obviously unconstitutional abortion regulation backed by a wholly unprecedented enforcement scheme is unlikely to prevail. In all these ways, the majority's decision is emblematic of too much of this court's shadow docket decision-making, which every day becomes more unreasoned, inconsistent, and impossible to defend. I respectfully dissent, says Elena Kagan. This is dangerous. This is a power grab. This is the consequence of people who, who refuse to vote for Hillary Clinton. I begrudgingly voted for Hillary Clinton. Wasn't a fan. But it was important to do so for the health and the welfare and well-being of my fellow Americans. I'm never going to need an abortion. It is unlikely my wife will ever need an abortion. It doesn't matter. We should all care one for another. Taking care of one another is something I say in every video. Is an ethos of mine. And I hope you will join me in becoming active, in becoming outraged at this unconstitutional action by the Supreme Court, filled to the brim with cowards planted there by Donald Trump because people didn't like Hillary Clinton. And, and, and they were allowed to be there because Democrats didn't have what it took to end the filibuster. Now is the time. Now is the time to stack this court. 11, 13, 15 justices. Get to work, Democrats. Get off of your, your reverence for, for tradition, Joe Biden. Women need you. The women of Texas and surely the women of states all across the country, who are the other states who are going to be implementing this exact procedural law. They're going to be copycats all over the country. Just watch. Because we have re religious zealotry attempting to rule the land rather than the rule of law, rather than separation of church and state. We have the Republican American Taliban. What do you think, though? I'd love to know. I really would love to know. You can call, leave me a brief voicemail, 714-576-4054. Of course, you can email me daily at dollamore.com. Tough times. Follow me on social media. I'd love to have you connect with me there. And if you appreciate what I do, if I bring you value, uh, $2 a month worth of value, uh, please consider supporting my work, helping produce my work here on the platform. Uh, you can click the join button, become a channel member. You can also go over to patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast and become a patron there. I sure do love you guys. I appreciate uh, all the time you spend engaging with my content. I'll see you next time. Be genuine and take care of one another.